Hi, it's Todd of Todd Stuff here, and today we're going to talk about the single axle trigger system, or the rotating nut system that you find on medieval crossbows. It's a very, very simple system, and so actually it stayed in use from, as far as we can tell, the late Roman era, so maybe 3rd third, third or 4th century AD, uh, really until uh, about 1500 when it started to get superseded by more complicated trigger systems. Um, now the way it works is you have a rotating nut here, so it's often known as a rotating nut system. So you have a rotating nut here, so if you imagine that my thumb is the string. Obviously when you span the bow and you hook the string onto the trigger here, onto the nut, it's going to be trying to pull the nut in that direction and rotate it in that direction. So I'll just load that with my thumb now. So I'm pushing on the top of the nut there, if I pull the trigger, it spins free. Now, it releases the string very easily and very cleanly because the string just rolls off and it allows it to go in a straight line. What that means is that it engages the back of the bolt very reliably and very solidly. It doesn't sort of like skip over or, or slide underneath. It just goes straight forward. So it's a fantastic system. It's very, very simple. That's also excellent because it means that it's cheap. So it's great for military systems. It's great on fairly no, low technology manufacture. Um, as sporting bows came in, sporting bows are associated with more money, really. Uh, and so the trigger systems became more expensive, partly because I would guess that there's more money available, partly because it's a showing off thing. Medieval people love to show off. Um, you know, I've got this, you haven't. You've got one of those old fashioned things. You know how it is. Now, the load of the string pushes in that direction, or pulls in that direction. That tries to rotate the nut in that direction, and then just under here, you can't see it from here, but there's a flat section which engages just on the end of this sear bar here. And so what happens, that's being pulled in that direction, the nut tries to rotate, so it pushes against uh, the sear. Now that means that the load is going through the sear and a lot of the load is going into the, um, the axle here which is mounted in the stock obviously. What that also means is if that plate on the bottom, the uh, angled notch on the bottom of the nut wears, so for instance it starts to have a slope on it, that's when you can start to get a hair trigger and you load it and it will just slip out. Now the spring helps that, it helps to keep it engaged. Now. The other thing that you need to be careful of here is the angle of that notch and the angle of the end of the bar here. Because what you don't want to happen is, if you imagine, I'm just touching the point of that nut now. If the way you've set it up means that the top of that nut is being pushed backward as you pull the trigger, which it can do. You can try this, just cut out some bits of cardboard at home and have a look at it. But if the top of that nut is being pushed backward, what that means is that you are having to actually fight against the draw of the bow by pulling the trigger. If when you pull the trigger, that point rotates slightly forward, what that means is you're in danger of having a, a very light trigger or a hair trigger. So really you're looking for that point to just not be moving through this action here. And that way you'll get a good neutral trigger that the heavier the bow, the heavier the trigger's gonna be. So up at a 900 pound bow, really, it can still be, you know, a pretty heavy trigger. But it's cheap. Um, if you get the trigger set up wrong, you just can't pull the trigger bar at all. Or it just flies off on its own accord, or you just touch it and it's gone. You know, so you've gotta be a bit careful about how you set them up. There's also a return spring here. It's not strictly necessary, but it does help to make sure that you know that the nut is well engaged. So when, uh, when you do span the bow, if it is a hand span, the nut is left in this position, but you rotate it by hand, you know it's engaged. If you're using goat's foot bow, it's actually the string pushing here which rotates the nut, and again, you know it's engaged. That solid thunk is a very reliable thing because of course, if it's not properly engaged and you start to take the pressure off the goat's foot lever, this has never happened to me actually, but I've imagined it, uh, you start to take the pressure off the, the goat's foot lever, if the string then slips, let's say when you're half an inch from it, it's really going to hurt your hand. I don't know what it's going to do, but it's going to shock your tendons, it might pull your hand into the bow, all sorts of unpleasant things. So, it's a bit like brakes on a car. It almost doesn't matter 
what else is going on. If you've got brakes, that's good. With a bow, it almost doesn't matter what's going on. If your trigger functions properly, that is the singular most important thing because it has to hold it. If, it, if you can't believe in your trigger, then you know, you're always going to be scared shooting a bow. It's always going to be dangerous. Um, so that's it. So originally I, I made a, an arco ballista, a, a Roman crossbow. Um, I didn't put the spring in because I did wonder about if the Romans had that technology, but I've since learned actually that they had leaf springs like this in their door locks. So undoubtedly they would have put them into their crossbow locks as well. So the next time I do an arco ballista, I'll spring load it just like this, to be honest. Um, so as you can see, it's a very simple, very robust system. Uh, works very well. Um, military bows, very often, um, in sort of Western Europe, they'd go for a steel nut. Um, sporting bows, they always went for uh, an antler nut. Um, and uh, again, on sort of military Central European and German bows, they'd also go for an antler, or an ivory, sorry, an antler or an ivory nut. So just for comparison here, here's a blank. I haven't turned it yet into a, a nut, but um, you can see that it's a nice solid piece of antler uh, taken from the crown, which one day will become a nut. Um, the advantage of this is that it's a lighter material than the steel. And so what you've got is the whole thing about bows is you're always trying to get that 1%, 2%, 3% better efficiency on all the different aspects, whether the string drags across the stock or or whatever it may be and in this instance you have a heavy mass in the nut and so you have an inertia to it that the string first of all has to rotate the nut before it can even start driving the bolt uh, and obviously the lighter the nut then the less energy from the bow goes into actually rotating the nut and so therefore the more energy goes into shooting the bolt so every aspect of the bow you've got to look at in this case um, for cost reasons I do it just as they did on munition bows I use a, a steel nut. Um, it's the cheap option and I don't actually know uh, what level of efficiency might fall off from that, but in this case actually very little. Um, maybe half a percent, maybe even less, I'm not sure. Uh, but there you are, the single axle or rotating nut trigger system, absolutely standard from about 300 AD-ish um, until about 1500. It did carry on beyond that, but um, that's where it, other trigger systems really began to supersede it. Thank you very much.